Picture this. It's the middle of a burning desert. The sun is glaring. The air feels like a furnace. And in front of you lies a body of water so still, so shiny, it looks like melted glass. You dip your hand in, and the water feels thicker, heavier, almost oily. You take a step in, and before you know it, your body floats like a cork without you even trying. Congratulations. You're in the Dead Sea, the only place on Earth where even people who can't swim become effortless floaters. But wait a second. Why is it called dead? Well, despite the name, the Dead Sea isn't really a sea. It's a gigantic salt lake, about 10 times saltier than the ocean. To put that in perspective, if you took a glass of dead seawater and left it to dry, you'd get a crust of salt thick enough to season a month's worth of fries. Its salinity sits around 34%, while the world's oceans hover around 3.5%. That's why you float so easily. The dense salt water pushes you up like an invisible mattress. But this same feature is also what kills almost everything inside it. Fish, algae, plankton, they all die within minutes in such a salty environment. No core coral reefs, no seaweed, no dolphins, nothing. Only a few kinds of microscopic bacteria and salt-loving organisms can survive. In other words, it's an ecosystem stripped to the bones. So how did it become this way? To understand that, you have to go back millions of years, to a time when this region wasn't dry desert but part of an ancient ocean that stretched across what is now the Middle East. Over time, tectonic forces pulled apart the land, creating a deep rift, what scientists call the Jordan Rift Valley. This valley trapped a pocket of seawater, which had no outlet to the ocean. Then the climate turned hot, evaporation skyrocketed, and slowly, the water left behind got saltier and saltier. Every drop that evaporated left its salt behind, until eventually, what remained was a liquid so dense that life simply gave up. It's nature's chemistry experiment. Take one landlocked lake, add scorching heat, and stir for a few million years. What you get is a shimmering pool of water so salty that it's practically a mineral mine. And that's exactly what humans saw when they found it. The Dead Sea has been famous for thousands of years, mentioned in the Bible, visited by kings, prophets, and tourists alike. Like. The Egyptians used its salts for mummification. Roman emperors prized its minerals for medicine and cosmetics. Even Cleopatra, the world's original beauty influencer, supposedly ordered shipments of Dead Sea mud to her palace because it made her skin immortal. But as much as humans loved taking from it, they also slowly began killing it. Again, you see, the Dead Sea is fed mainly by one river, the Jordan River. And over the last century, Israel, Jordan, and Syria have all been drawing water from that river to irrigate farms, grow crops, and sustain cities. The result? The Dead Sea's water level has been been dropping fast, about a meter per year. Imagine a swimming pool losing that much water every 12 months. In the past 50 years alone, it's shrunk by more than a third of its size. Today, standing at its shores feels eerie. Old resorts that once touched the water now sit hundreds of meters inland. The shoreline is littered with sinkholes, giant pits where underground salt dissolves and the ground collapses without warning. Entire parking lots, roads, even palm trees have been swallowed by the earth. It's as if the sea is vanishing not only in size but in spirit. And yet, despite all this, the Dead Sea remains strangely alive. Not in the biological sense, but in its impact. It's a mirror reflecting both nature's extremes and human greed. It shows what happens when geography meets chemistry, and when human ambition meets environmental limits. Because while the Dead Sea was born naturally, its slow death is man-made. In many ways, the Dead Sea is like a warning written in salt. It tells us what happens when a body of water loses balance, when inflow dries up, but evaporation keeps going. And that story doesn't just belong to the Middle East. It's happening in miniature all over the planet. From the Aral Sea in Central Asia to shrinking lakes in California and Iran. Every dried up lake whispers the same truth. Water is life. And when it's gone, so is everything else. But if that sounds depressing, don't worry. This story isn't done yet. Because even a dead sea still has the power to teach us something about how life, chemistry, and time collide. And, as you'll see next, the dead sea may be losing water, but it's gaining something far more human. Because the dead sea, in a strange way, has become more alive in meaning than in biology. It's no longer just a body of water. It's a symbol. For scientists, it's a living laboratory to study how life can adapt to extremes. For economists, it's a resource. For politicians, it's a diplomatic chessboard. And for the rest of us, it's a mirror that reflects how fragile the balance between nature and civilization really is. Let's start with the science. The chemistry of the Dead Sea is unlike anywhere else on Earth. It's not just sodium chloride, the same salt in your kitchen. It's a complex mix of minerals, magnesium, potassium, calcium, bromine, and bitumen. These elements make the water dense and oily, almost alien to the touch. They also give rise to strange effects. A swimmer can't sink, a wound burns instantly, and a drop of water in your eyes feels like liquid fire. Yet those same minerals have become the foundation of billion-dollar industries. The mud and salts of the Dead Sea are mined for cosmetics, fertilizers, and even medicines used around the world. But here's the twist. That same extraction is speeding up its disappearance. Factories on both the Israeli and Jordanian sides pump water into evaporation ponds to harvest minerals. What remains behind is loss. Less water, more salt crust. It's the paradox of profit. We are literally mining the sea to death, and in doing 
so, we're watching one of Earth's most ancient landmarks vanish before our eyes. Now let's look below the surface. Literally, beneath the Dead Sea lies a geologic rift so deep it could swallow skyscrapers. The basin sits over 400 meters below sea level, the lowest point on Earth's land surface. And that depth isn't stable. As the water recedes, underground salt layers dissolve, creating voids that collapse into massive sinkholes. Over 7,000 have been recorded, some swallowing entire roads or farms overnight. It's as if the Earth is sighing under the weight of imbalance. The ground itself is responding to the loss of water, almost like a slow-motion protest. And while the Earth shifts, the politics above it get just as complicated. The Dead Sea lies between Israel, Jordan, and the West Bank, a region where every drop of water carries the weight of history. Efforts to save it have been tangled in diplomacy. The most ambitious idea was the Red Dead Project, a plan to build a 180-kilometer canal linking the Red Sea to the Dead Sea. The idea was to bring in seawater, generate hydroelectric power, and slow down the Dead Sea's decline. On paper, it sounded like salvation. In reality, it's been stalled for years, politics, costs, and environmental concerns freezing it in bureaucracy. Some scientists warn that mixing waters from two seas could trigger unpredictable chemical reactions, turning the Dead Sea into something unrecognizable. Still, there's a strange beauty in the effort, because even the idea of saving the Dead Sea is symbolic. It shows humanity's urge to undo damage, to restore what we've lost, even if it's partly our fault. Tourists still come by the thousands every year, floating effortlessly, covering themselves in mineral mud, laughing at how gravity seems to take a day off here. It's one of the few places where people literally feel science working on their bodies, and maybe that's why it captivates us. It's not just a place, it's an experience of paradoxes, death that feels alive, decay that brings healing, loss that teaches resilience. If you stand by its shore at sunrise, you'll see mountains glowing pink on the Jordanian side, and the surface mirroring the light like a lick. The stillness is haunting. It feels ancient, as if time itself slowed down here. And yet, you can also feel the quiet urgency of something slipping away, a beauty that might not last another century. Scientists predict that if water diversion continues at the current pace, the Dead Sea could shrink into small saline pools by 2050. In other words, we're watching a sea die in real time. But maybe the bigger story isn't the death of a sea. It's the reminder of connection. The Dead Sea doesn't exist in isolation. Its fate depends on rivers, rain, and human choices made hundreds of kilometers away. It's a perfect metaphor for the planet itself. Every ecosystem, every lake, every ocean is part of the same circulation, the same cycle that turns vapor into rain, salt into life, and life into memory. So why is the Dead Sea dead? Because nature gave it no outlet, and humanity gave it no mercy. It's the result of heat, geology, and human thirst colliding in one basin. But its death is also what keeps it immortal in our imagination, a place where science meets spirituality, where silence carries the weight of ages, and where you can float between heaven and earth and feel both at once. Maybe that's the ultimate lesson. What we call dead is often just misunderstood. The Dead Sea isn't lifeless. It's a reminder that life on this planet only exists within the narrowest margins. And when we push those margins too far, even the mightiest waters can disappear. But until that final drop evaporates, it will keep reflecting sunlight and truth back at us. Because sometimes even death has something to teach about how to live.